Well, we're going to talk about 20 years of retirement because that's probably what most of us have, at least 20 years. Now, some people retire at 62. They might have 30 years because the average uh, American, I think the average American male is going to live to like mid 80s. And, you know, women, they might live to 90s. My wife could live to 100. So I have to make sure that I plan to make sure that she's taken care of for all this time. But how happy are they going to be after 20 years of inflation? Because that's exactly what they've got to look forward to. You know, inflation is just pervasive. Now, we've talked about this in my other videos. And if you do like my videos, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm going to tell you, you should probably look at 81 and broke. It's only about five and a half minutes. And that's a true story of someone who... You know, didn't want to uh, didn't want to buy rental properties, and 20 years later regrets that. So let's just talk about what's going on today because retirement is an American travesty. You know, you just can't wait to retire, and yet once you retire, you are on a fixed income because what you've done, you've retired from your income. And once that happens, why, of course, you're going to be coming. How happy are you going to be after 20 years? So let's just talk about what we see in our research. So let's go to this. So here's the reality of it. This is going coming out of Federal Reserve Electronic Data System. You know, I, I love this. But since 1913, we've lost almost the entire amount of what a dollar used to purchase. We've dropped virtually everything. It looks like we've lost all our purchasing power. It isn't even recognizable for what we had in 1913, what that what a dollar would buy in, in 1913, because it's just down to virtually next to nothing. Now, this is happening all across the globe. I mean, this is just something that the governments do. They inflate you away and they, they borrow and spend. And uh, it's just uh, it's it's called inflation. Let me go my next slide. Let's talk about what's going on here. So let's get this just a little closer. Since 1974, that's when I started in business. So I've been in business, in the real estate business, for 50 years. And in 50 years, had, you had a nest egg in uh, 1974. It has lost 84% of its uh, purchasing power. So if you have $100,000, it's only worth like $15,000, $16,000 today. So if you think that you could have bought, if your purchasing power was $100,000 in 1974, it's only $15,000 now. Let me go to my next slide. Now, that is just, it's just a travesty. This is what happens to our American retirees. You know, they retire from an income totally unprepared. Now, this is coming from Lakshman Akuthan of Economic Cycle Research. And those guys are just brilliant over there. Now, these, this inflation comes in waves um, you know, this is looking at the 19s in the 1970s. You can see how the inflation came along. And I think we've just finished inflation wave number one, which is lesser of the next two. And the next two are coming. And I'm going to tell you, if you followed our videos, we talked about the last couple that you could see at the producer price index at the wholesale level that raw materials are again starting to percolate higher particularly copper. Copper is in everything. So if copper goes up, price of everything is going to go up with it. And it's not just copper, it's everything. So we can see that the wholesale price level, we're going to see inflation. This is what we talked about with Dr. Netter. Uh, Dr. Netter pr uh, predicted it in 2020. And I agree with him because I could see it at the producer price le uh, level that inflation was coming for the first time in 10 years. So I think we have two more waves coming and i think they're going to be very very vicious particularly if you're on a fixed income you know particularly if you were in bonds you know just getting an income that you just added terrible so let me just dig digress here when inflation comes in what happens to interest rates you know interest rates go up as inflation goes up so if you think that six or seven percent on, on interest rates is bad now we could easily get nine 10, 11, 12, 13% inflation, in which case you're going to have interest rates commensurate with the inflation. Things are going to get really bad. Now, I've placed in here, let me just look at this. 
when you have between these waves a buy opportunity for you in, in housing and in and investment uh, properties, but certainly in housing. Now, it's, it's a kind of a balancing act because I think that it's jeopardy right now. As you've listened to my other uh, videos, I think that we're heading into a uh, topping of the process. But in the meantime, we've got, we've got another cycle that's coming in alongside the real estate cycle. And that's the inflation cycle. And uh, the inflation cycle is very evident, and it's typically three waves. So, um, you know, I don't tell you to, to jump in with full weight, with full uh, uh, feet, but I would say you probably want to put your toe in the water here and maybe get some properties just a little bit. You know, if you're going to buy 10, maybe you want to buy one and get in front of this inflation wave. And, you know, um, if you're able to, Maybe you want to take just a little bit of uh, leverage. Maybe, you know, if the property is 400000 maybe take 100000 150000 just to get some uh, leverage onto the property. Let someone else pay that off. But it, it is going to be kind of a, a balancing act because I think prices are still going to come down. Now, these are long-term investments. I'll keep that in mind. It's a long-term investment. So we, we do want to keep this. And, and all this does not, you know, there is no one-size-fits-all. So please call us. I put my uh, uh, my number at the end. You're able to call us and set an appointment, and we can discuss your your situation. Now, let's just take a look at this. Now, this is from May of 20 to April of 24, so four years. We're talking about four years of purchasing power, and you can clearly see this. Look at the decline in purchasing power. You've lost 17 percent. Now, if you were just retired and you retired with a $100,000 income, you now have about 82.4. That's what's happened to your purchasing power. It's no longer at 100. And in four short years, you're down into the low 80s. And I'm gonna tell you another couple of years like that, and you're gonna be down in the upper 70s or mid 70s. And you know, uh, we're gonna be in retirement for 15, 20 years, and you could lose virtually all of your purchasing power and literally become a pauper. This is my concern for you. So uh, we just want to try and do something about that. Now, in my world, we've been talking about having single family homes, that are very, very conservative. These are affordable homes, uh, not apartment units or condos. We talk about single family homes, one, because they're, uh, you know, they're hard to find and affordable homes. It's uh, it, it's so expensive to build something to build bigger houses. So we're talking about a house that's maybe 14, 15, 16, 17, maybe 1,800 square feet. They're going to rent overnight. And our tenants are typically mom, dad, a couple of kids. You put a family in there and they stay for three, five, 10, 15 years. And the income stream just keeps rolling in. And let me just blow this up so you can see it's not we lost if you... Uh, if you uh, did not have anything, you know, we just talked about the fact that uh, purchasing prices, uh, purchasing power lost 18%, but rent in that same time frame has gone up 28%, more than covered your, uh, your loss through inflation. So yes, your purchasing power went down, but if you had some rentals, the, you, you mitigated that by raising rents. And of course, uh, in this instance, uh, you actually would have made some money on this. Well, how, how cool is that? that? That's a great thing to do. Let me go by my next slide. Let's just open it up so you can see this. So I hear this all the time, particularly with people who, you know, aren't bent on investing. They're, they're like put money in their bank and are very, very conserved. Uh, I'm going to tell you about our program of just, just two rentals. But rent has risen every single year since 1941, except for through the great financial crisis of 2009 through 2011 where it just flattened out it did not it did not uh go down it just stopped going up and then and when this was over once we got to 2012 rents started going up again so again protecting your purchasing power making you income streams is just a great great process now if you had a little income if you had a little bit of leverage on that property you would have also been paying down the mortgage all through this. Again, I can't stress this enough. Go go see uh, uh, 81 and Broke, which is, it's a true story. It's only five and a half minutes on our, on our video channels. And uh, that is a very, very good testimony to uh, preparing for yourself a little bit. So let me go by the next slide. So... Um, this is just opening it up a little bit so you can see what happened during the, uh, during uh, 
2009 through 2011, it just flattened. It didn't really do anything. It didn't go down. And I'm going to tell you, let me just tell you that my uh, my personal portfolio paid every month. My wife and I took our kids to Australia like we always did for three months. We played on the, on the beach. And our property managers sent us our check each and every month. They put it into our accounts for us. And our tenants paid like clockwork. Now, and I sit down uh, with uh, clients. We say that uh, your rental portfolio is work for like a lifeboat for you. So when business gets bad, maybe your business gets bad, your, your uh, practice gets bad, and income stops coming in, your rentals will continue paying you month after month after month. They work just uh, like a champ for us. I'm sure they're going to work this way again. And that's what happens. So um, there's just a wonderful thing for you to have particularly if you are in the uh, affordable uh, uh, in affordable uh, housing space, which is where we're at. Uh, we, we like that. There's a lot of them here in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, and we're buying those because it's just a great time to own rental properties, particularly if you're looking at a recession in the face, which I think we are, uh, because rentals are non-discretionary. You have to pay your rent particularly here in Arizona. Now, I hear these terrible stories of, uh, of California where you can never get rid of a tenant. I'm going to tell you, Arizona has a Landlord-Tenant Act, and it's prescribed. So rent is due the first. It is late the second, and we are process serving by the time you get to the sixth. We're in court the seventh, and uh, we are uh, the process is underway, and we're in front of a judge by about the 21st or 22nd. The judge will say, did you pay your rent? If you did not pay your rent, the gavel comes down. They tell you to get out. And you have three days to get out. So by the time the 25th, 26th, 27th comes, we have the property back. We can paint it, clean it, and put it into the, for the next rental cycle. Uh, it's just that quick. So within three, three weeks, three and a half weeks of people not paying your rent, they are gone. And typically what typically happens is if they're not going to pay the rent, they leave anyway. So uh, we get the properties back and we start again. Now, this doesn't happen really uh, all that often. I know this is a scare for people if you haven't had one. If you do your homework with uh, uh, rental scores and uh, credit reports and uh, checking their uh, uh, their debt load and their savings, you know, you, know, you get a pretty good tenant. Uh, we just don't have a lot of that. So I, I think you're fine. And it's been proven to be the case. I mean, my own personal one, we just, uh, we just, the rents just come in month after month after month. Let me go to my next slide and just take a look at that. So for those that don't have a property, no matter how old you are, we think you should have at least just two. Two is going to make a difference in your life. Now, we prefer that if you're my age, you know, if you're 60, Plus that these properties are free and clear, or maybe you just put just a scotch of um, maybe, you know, if it was 400,000, maybe put a hundred thousand dollars in leverage on it, uh, you, you know, just to get, let your tenant pay that uh, loan off and just give you a little bit of internal rate of return. But just two is going to keep you abreast of inflation, going to help you a lot. It's not going to do as much as 10. 10 is where we'd like you to be, uh, but just too easy to do easy to uh, take care of. Uh, we put it with our property managers. They'll take care of absolutely everything. You know, we uh, we take care of everything for you. We've got good property managers. You own the properties. You know, we manage the management pro companies. They take care of everything. They take the calls. They take the repairs. They make sure that it gets painted. You know, if the garbage disposal goes out or the air conditioner, they call a property manager. They don't call you. The property manager takes care of it. This is just what they get to do. But just two in your portfolio is going to make a huge difference in your lifestyle and protecting it. Particularly if you're 70 years old or 75, you can live to 90. And if you don't have something like this, you're going to lose most of your purchasing power. You do not want to be a pauper at 90 years old. We well, need to just get two. Now you can do that here in Phoenix. Love to have your business. We'd love to have your business. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that, uh, Phoenix gets a little maligned because there's only one market here in Arizona, and that's Phoenix. You go to Florida, you get 40 markets or 50 markets. Same with Texas, they get 50, 60, 70 markets. Just one in Arizona, and that's Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix right next door to California. People are leaving in California. They can't wait to get out and come over here. We've got uh, we've got a new, we're becoming a new semiconductor uh, plant. We've got the Taiwan Semiconductor with the uh, 
I, I think it's a $65 billion facility, 16 or 32 plants are underway, just tens of thousands of really good jobs. So things booming here, we're doing very, very well. We're not going to be the post to try like we were last time. We're going to do really, really well. Let me go to my next slide and let's just talk about this. Now, this is where I'm at. You're welcome to call me. You know, I, I make these, uh, try and make them a little vanilla because I don't know who you are. We'd like to know you before we really make any recommendations. So you're welcome to call me at my uh, at my corporate headquarters with West USA. They're a multi-billion dollar uh, corporation. They do all our back uh, office. They keep us into compliance. Uh, they're, they're a very financially sound organization. And this is who uh, holds our, our licenses. So if you want to call me and set an appointment, we're more than happy to talk to you about your personal, your personal um, situations. We'll give you 15 uh, minutes, 30 minutes after that. You know, we have to put you on the clock. But uh, we're going to get an awful lot done in, in, in that time frame, get a feel for what it is, and see if this even works for you. Maybe it doesn't. Probably will, though. So my very, very best to you guys. My best. Bye-bye.